So now it's time to write on your cake, and I've come up with a few ways to help it be a little bit easier for you to try at home. So what we have are our class materials here, and we included a template of happy birthday in the standard font that I like to use. So what I did is I taped that down to my table, and I have a piece of parchment paper or wax paper works just fine too, and what I'm gonna do is tape that on top of my template so that it doesn't move or slide around at all. And then I have my freshly filled bag of buttercream frosting that we made earlier with a number two tip on my bag. And you'll see I didn't fill my bag too full. When I'm writing, I like to have a lot more control, so I'll put a little less frosting in my bag. So we're gonna go ahead and start, and we're gonna practice on our parchment until we feel comfortable. I can't stress enough how important it is to practice. I wouldn't be where I am today with my writing skills if I wouldn't have practiced for months and months and actually many years now. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I think is the easiest way to write on a cake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lean over, I'm gonna get in a comfortable position, I'm using my strong hand to hold the bag. Again, it's twisted, so we have a nice control. And my other hand is gonna be guiding my tip. This is gonna help me be less shaky when I'm piping. So what I'm gonna do is try to create my first straight line. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna attach my frosting, lightly squeezing. I'm gonna lift up. And when I'm almost to the end of my line, I'm gonna drop back down and stop squeezing. That's gonna help me create a very straight line. I'm gonna do that over, I'll show you again. So I'm gonna attach my frosting to my cake, squeezing in a solid motion, lifting up. When I'm almost to the end, I'm gonna drop back down, stop squeezing, and then pull my bag away. And I'm doing these in segments. So now I'm gonna do my middle line to my H, I'm gonna to attach to my first line, pick up, and drop back down. Now the reason why I do that, if I wasn't to lift up, it's gonna show every single little shake that your hand's gonna make. So lifting up on my frosting is gonna help drop that line perfectly straight. So let's do it again for our A. Attach, lift, drop, and stop squeezing. It's very important you stop squeezing right when you drop, otherwise you're gonna get a little tail on the end of your line. I like to break all my letters up into segments. It's gonna make me feel a lot more comfortable. Instead of thinking you have to do that whole letter in one time, I'm gonna break it up so I feel a lot more comfortable. Now let's start with our P. Squeeze, lift up, drop down, stop squeezing. And now the curved line's a little harder, but I'm still not touching the cake. You can see I have my bag raised up. It's gonna give me a lot more control of where I put that buttercream, and I'm gonna slowly bring it back down to attach. And that completes my word happy. Now I definitely would wanna practice this over and over again until I felt comfortable with the size of my font and getting those lines nice and straight. Once you feel comfortable with the parchment, what I want you to do is move on to a frosted cake board. So what I did here is I frosted my cake board and I put that in the refrigerator for about a half an hour so it got nice and chilled. The frosting's gonna stick differently to the buttercream than it does to the parchment. So let's move this out of the way. And now we're gonna freehand it right onto the board, keeping my template close by so I can look back if I need a reference. Now in here I'm gonna start with the word birthday and exactly the same technique. I'm making my letter B first with the same technique. I'm gonna pipe on, lift up, drop down, and stop. And I can compare to my parchment to kinda of keep my size here. And I have my two humps. Remember to lift up so you have nice control of where your buttercream's gonna lay. Stop, we'll do that one more time. Round and stop. Now for my eye, what I wanna do is I kinda make an imaginary line and I come over so I know where that top of my eye is gonna start. So I'm gonna come over from the top of my B, 
I'm going to start squeezing, lift up, drop down, paying attention that I'm going to make it end right where the bottom of my B ends as well. Okay, it's the same thing with the R. I'll make my imaginary line over from the eye. Straight line, lift up, drop down. And you can see I'm going pretty slow. You can take your time. My curved line. My bag's about between an eighth to a quarter inch away from the cake at the highest point and then dropping down. So I continuously want to kind of make sure my letters stay in a line. So moving over from the top of them with that imaginary line to create the top of my T. And then I'll start in the middle, lift up, drop down. Start my H right where my T ends. You can see I'm leaving a little bit of space in between the letters. Always using my other hand to help guide my bag to keep it from shaking. You can just use one hand, but you'll notice you're gonna be a lot more shaky. So I'm finished with birth. I'm gonna move on to day and the exact same technique. And when I'm all through with this, I'm gonna get out the cake and show you how we do the same exact technique on the top of our cake. So now we have our chilled cake that Marianne put the stripes on earlier. And I'm gonna show you how to figure out where I'm gonna put my birthday message on here and leave a little room for flowers. So the easiest thing, I think, is to start with birthday. And I'm gonna center that actually all the way over to the left side of my cake. So let's start with my letter B. So it's the same technique that you practiced earlier with the lifting and dropping. And individually, kind of sectioning out your letters. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you if, say you make your letters too short, I'm gonna show you how to make those fit. So you can see, if you were to look at this, it kind of looks like my word is gonna be crooked because it's not lined up straight here at the bottom. So what I can do is actually take my frosting bag right where I left off and squeeze and pull out just a little bit more just to elongate those letters. So if you do mess up a little bit, you can see here what I'm gonna do is just take my tip. I'm not squeezing, I'm lightly brushing it against that to blend that line together. So if you do make mistakes, there are ways to fix it. So we'll just keep going here. I'm gonna write the whole word birthday, keeping that all lined up. So I finished birthday, I'm gonna move on to happy. I'm gonna line my H pretty much right above my B, and that's gonna allow me to have a little bit of room for age and still have enough room for those big, beautiful flowers. And the reason why I like writing in all capital letters, I feel like it's easy to line everything up. So I have my top of my letters lining up with the next top of the next letter, and the bottom of that letter lining up with the bottom of the letter before it. It's gonna be a lot easier to keep your letters nice and straight if you're able to have something in front of it to follow. Okay, so we have our Y complete. I'm gonna do my age next, which my age, I'm just gonna do more of a regular style number here. I'm not gonna to get too fancy with it because I wanna keep this nice and simple and something that I feel comfortable with doing. So let's just do a number four. Again, the same technique, I'm gonna squeeze and pull down. Break that over and across. And sometimes what I'll do if I wanna add a little bit of interest is I'll write my age in a different color. But for today, I'm just gonna leave it in the same color. I think that looks great. Now we're gonna move on to writing the name. I like to write the name in cursive or like a stylized cursive font. I think that adds a little bit of interest, but if you're too intimidated by that at first, you can actually just do it in the same simple all capital letter font and it's still gonna look amazing. But let's just show you if you wanna take it up a notch how you're gonna do that. So I'm gonna write my own name. That's easiest to practice your own name because you've been writing it your whole life. So I always say when you're gonna practice cursive or stylized font, writing your own name is gonna help out a lot. 
So what I'm going to do is I kind of want to imagine where I'm going to be putting my letters. You also can print something out in cursive to have next to you to look at. Now I also want to think about flower placement. So I know we're going to put some flowers up here on the top and also a couple down here in the corner. So I'm going to move my name over just a little bit and start kind of right underneath that H. Now this is a little bit harder because we're going to be doing more of like a fluid motion, but still we want to lift our bag off the cake and let that line fall in that pattern of the letter there. And then we want to stop when we know we're at the end of it. Now the first letter is always the hardest because we want that to be nice and fancy, but the rest after that are going to be a little bit easier. So now I'm going to do my A. I'm going to come around lifting up the whole time. Now I can stop here. So now I'm going to do the U, but I'm going to show you how I can connect it. So I'm going to just do the U separate, come down, stop, and then what I can do is attach my A to the U the same way I fixed my I and my R. So I'm going to take my buttercream where that stopped, I'm going to start squeezing and pull it up and blend it right into that U. And you won't even see where that line starts and stops. Now here for the R, there's some cursive letters that are a little bit confusing. So I'm going to do the R just a normal lowercase r, and I'm not going to connect it. So here's where you can make that decision if you want your letters to connect or not. I'm going to bring that curve over, and I think that looks just fine without attaching my U to that R. Now we're going to go on to our E, which I'm going to start pretty much right underneath that curve of my R. I'm going to lift up, bring it around. If you feel comfortable, you can continue right into that N. If not, remember you can stop after every letter because it's really easy to then take your bag and start right back where you left off, continuing with that lifting up. When I end, I always like to end with a little tiny curve. It's going to just make it look a little bit more fancy. And that's kind of how I plot and figure out the easiest way to write on the top of the cake.